Die. 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 Hey, Hex, do you want to go down to the studio and do the Doom review? Yeah, why not? Wolfenstein is the granddaddy of first person shooters, then Doom is the dad. And daddy's back, baby. We can work together in a way that benefits us both. Demonic presence and fun saving us. The level design, the monsters, the weapons, the twitchy controls, the side strafing. Within minutes, I was a kid again, playing Doom for the first time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it has been about 12 years since Doom 3 came out, which in video game years is like forever ago. So, of course, they've done the only responsible thing they can do when they haven't released a game in a long time. They've done a good old-fashioned reboot, and you can tell it's a reboot because it doesn't have a number at the end of the name. <laughs> well, let's start with the campaign because it throws you straight into the nightmare. You, the ever-silent protagonist, wake up on a slab somewhere on Mars. And no surprise, things have quite literally gone to hell. And within seconds you've crushed your first skull, grabbed a gun, and donned your armor. Then you meet Space Bane over the intercom, who offers to help you resolve the situation. Welcome. I'm Dr. Samuel Hayden. I'm the head of this facility. Which you respond to in the only way you know how, to punch it. But it was worth the risk. I assure you. Yeah, so there is a thin veneer of story to follow, and it goes something like this. A crazy person has opened a portal to hell, and you should probably try and close it. Well, there's a bit more to it than that. There is the mystery of who you are and your role in it all, and I quite enjoyed it. I don't think anyone's going to be playing this for a well-told story, though. Mm. What's important is that they've struck a good balance of giving you enough context to explain what's going on and motivate you through the game without slowing things down with lots of cutscenes. Most of the story is told through little ghost scenes scattered about the place. The story is there if you want to absorb it, but if you just want to ignore that and shoot some demons, then go right ahead. Hmm. I thought it had a bit of a strange tone to it all, though. I mean, it does feel like the developers are taking this whole concept quite seriously. But then there's stuff like in-game propaganda boasting about how clever they are for harnessing hell energy and turning it into clean energy. As if messing with hell is some great way to find clean energy. It kind of almost seems like a parody of itself. And I don't think it's trying to be funny, but then it doesn't seem like it's taking the piss either. Yeah, well, I think that's the tone they're going for, and I think it works. You know, it's still over the top, but intense and gritty at the same time. This is the sort of game where you look at it and you can see that any kind of news reports that slam video games in the future, this is what they will show. Double jumping around, fighting off huge demons with ridiculous weapons, blood and guts everywhere. That's video games, and it's still fun. Yeah, that's true. And of course, Doom essentially did set the mold for this kind of shooter and created many of those stereotypes. So it's only natural that they'd want to embrace all of that in a reboot. However, to play devil's advocate, I would also argue that we have perhaps matured past that as well. I don't know, I think this is mature just in a different type of way, you know, in its focus, right? Because <laughs> rebooting an old game like this is hard. It rarely works. So they've gone for this classic old school shooter and I think there's a space for that in the gaming scene. In the zeitgeist. In the zeitgeist. <laughs> this is so old school. You know, there's no recharging health and you can hold an entire arsenal of oversized weapons somehow. I like how you've got to keep moving and shooting, trying to grab a few bits of health and armor to scrape by, or find the odd power-up like quad damage or berserker, which turns you into One Punch Man.
and they give you just the right amount of ammo, so you're forced to switch weapons to mix up the action. And this game is just so smooth. It's so fast. Mm, I mean, it couldn't help but feel a little bit repetitive after a while for me. Firefights always follow the same formula. Small demons spawn in, then some bigger ones, and then a few even bigger ones, and then some more big ones. And a lot of those bigger demons are quite bullet spongy, so it can get a bit exhausting fighting them off. Yeah, but you know, it's all on purpose, right? This isn't like the Wolfenstein reboot where they really focused on storytelling and characters and they absolutely nailed that. Here they've chosen to embrace the old school. And, and I get if you don't have the nostalgic connection to it, it's not going to be for everyone. Also, there's a much broader set of enemies than most shooters, each with their own weaknesses and tactics to consider. Levels are well designed with lots of different paths to take and secrets to find. Well, they have done a good job of keeping things interesting with all of the upgrades to your weapons and armor as you go. Each gun has two different special modes you can unlock and upgrade, and you can find tokens to unlock special buffs for your armor or ones that can improve your base stats like max health. It's just small tweaks to that Doom formula that give you a bit more to do. And the drip feed of weapons is good too, so by the time you get to a room full of tough demons and you don't feel like picking them off one by one, just get out the BFG. So many giblets. <laughs> well, one thing we should talk about are those glory kills. More like gory kills, am I right? Huh? Eh? Huh? Eh? <laughs> they are gory. It's a lot of blood. These are special up-close finishes that you can perform once a demon is weak enough, and they generally involve dismembering the demon somehow and using that dismembered part in some creative way to finish them off. Yeah, yeah it's so over-the-top gory that by the time you've chainsawed your fourth demon in half and seen all the bits, it just loses impact a bit and becomes ridiculous. That may be so, but I think it's still glorifying the violence to a degree that's a little bit too distasteful for me personally. I mean, how different is it from just mowing down zombies with a machine gun? Really? I think it's a bit gorier than that, Butter. <laughs> well, you know, he's just using his fists instead of a weapon. And they are demons from hell. Someone's got to do it. I suppose it's just that my memory is a lot more pixelated, you know, whereas this is a lot more confronting in its realism. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> well, the glory kills do have an important role mechanically. Performing them gives you extra health and ammo. They also take down enemies quicker and push you into the fight so you're never backing down. And that's good because hiding in the corners won't save you here. I think they happened a bit too frequently though. It was almost every single enemy I could finish off that way and I think if they'd been less frequent from a gameplay point of view that would have worked much better. Overall though, I really enjoyed this campaign. I think it hit all the right Doom notes that I wanted it to hit. Did you go hunting in the levels for secrets? Oh, a little bit. They're hard to find. These are big levels and a bit confusing in an old school kind of way. But the good thing is that I want to go back and replay some of these levels. And I thought the level design was great. Oh, and that opening shot of Mars at the beginning. <laughs> well, let's move on to the multiplayer, which, you know, got savaged by people during the beta, didn't it? Yeah, that's pretty standard for a beta, though. But I think people were looking for that, you know, old-school Twitch arena shooter from the days of yore, and it's not really that. There's a lot of modern touches that might not sit well with old-school fans. Yeah, like how weapons don't spawn into the map, and instead everyone just picks loadouts to spawn with. Or the fact that rocket jumping isn't really very effective. Or that rockets aren't that effective full stop. Somewhat minor things for some, but disappointing for fans. I'm not sure if I actually like this multiplayer overall, Hex. Firstly, there's no server list, it's all matchmaking, that always makes me sad. And secondly, where's my free-for-all mode? It's all team-based. <laughs> well, they have said they're going to be adding more playlists and modes in the future, so... The future is in the future. What about now? I want to play Arena now. And chase those frags, Hex! <laughs> <laughs> That was brutal. It was also very hard to find players and games outside the most popular modes. Team Deathmatch and Domination are capture the point mode. Ah, there's so much blood. Ah, no! It's my blood, it's my blood! 
<laughs> there are, of course, other modes like freeze tag, where you have to freeze enemy players and try and shatter them, or warpath, which is essentially a moving king of the hill mode. But alas, finding games for those proved fruitless. Connecting. There's a lot of unlocks, though. <laughs> Custom armor and weapon skins. Oh, watch out for, like, the guy who looks like a giant monster. And you can also unlock these crazy giant demons, which you can pick up as power-ups in some of the modes. What is this giant pentagram situation? Oh, shit, what's happening? Oh, God. <laughs> I'm the monster. I'm coming for you. I'm coming for you. <laughs> oh, <I'm dead. laughs> They're so much fun. But the most important unlock, in my opinion, is the taunts. <laughs> and my favourite is the Carlton. His gestures. <laughs> the There's also a third chunk of the game called Snap Map, which sounds like something you'd find in a Pokemon game. But it's similar to something like Halo's Forge mode, where you can build your own maps. It's a touch more user-friendly than Forge, though, with a few convenient views to choose from and simple-to-use chunks that snap together easily, hence the name. It's also more versatile than Forge mode, letting you place AI and triggers and such, create your own single-player or co-op levels, as well as multiplayer modes. Everything in Snap Map is limited to four players, though, so you'll only be able to create smaller custom game types. <laughs> you just kicked me! It's impressively easy to use, and I like how quick it is to find highly rated creations and launch into them. And I've already noticed some interesting level design, such as a giant keyboard with a drum sequencer and a cowbell you can play with. Why not? <laughs> Final thoughts? Well, look, this was never going to be the kind of game that I was going to fall in love with, but I like where their heads were at. I've been giving it three out of five stars. Yeah, it is what it is. At its core, it's an old school shooter, but with modern trimmings, and I just had so much fun with it. I'm giving it four.